You just got hired as a game dev and you're heading in for your first day of work. What's that like? What do you do? And what are they going to expect of you? This can actually be kind of terrifying. I've gone through this process a couple times and I've talked to a lot of developers who've done this themselves, probably hundreds of them, and going through kind of what their first day is like. And it varies quite a bit. By the way, if you've got an interesting first day story, make sure you leave it in the comments. This video actually comes from a question in the comments where they were asking about getting into the AAA industry. And I wanna answer that question and then get into one other that was a little bit uh, less happy of a question at the end. So this one reads, you're certainly making good points right there. Again, about the getting a job as a great way to learn and get into the, get, build up your experience in the industry. It says, if you can help me a little here, I do have a question. What is usually expected for a beginner? Unity game programmer maybe that got their, recently got their first job. I would love to know what it is that's exactly expected of me since, well, I don't see in what I could work on. Maybe even make this a new series of videos. And I, I don't know that this necessarily needs to be a series. I think I can probably knock this out in um, just a couple of minutes. So you go in day one, what are you gonna be doing? Well, number one, you're gonna get introduced to a bunch of people. You'll go around, probably say hi to all of the other developers. <clears throat> Not exciting part. The first actual interesting and difficult thing that you'll usually get as a task, not all places have this, but a lot of them do, is to set up your own development environment. And this, I think, it might sound terrible to some people who ha come from places where the dev environment just comes on a laptop and it's handed to them. But if you're working in video games, setting up the development environment gets you familiar with what's going on and what the processes are like. Sometimes in some projects, that's just a matter of like opening up Unreal or Unity and you know viewing your project. But a lot of the time, I'd say nine out of 10 times, uh, basically everywhere I've ever been, you've got to do some extra setup. You've got to set up your source control system. You're going to have to understand understand either Git or Perforce or one of the other options. You're gonna have to, or you're gonna have to understand and figure out whatever option they're using. You're gonna need to be able to do a little bit of research and dig into how to use a source control system. They're all <coughs> pretty similar though. It's not that diff difficult if you've got one of them down. And then you're gonna be setting up things like the path for all your stuff, figuring out where all the art assets are coming from. If they're not already integrated directly in your project, you may have an external build pipeline, a whole process that kicks off, maybe pushes stuff out to other servers or out to web services or other things. There's a lot of stuff that goes into <laughs> environments for builds of games, especially as the games get bigger and grow longer and longer. If it's a startup and it's small, it's usually not that much setup, but a bigger place, you're definitely gonna spend maybe a day or two doing environment setup. Some places, again, we'll do this for you, but I recommend and, and prefer when we have to do it ourselves because you get much more familiar with it. And if something goes wrong, <clears throat> you know that process. You know how to fix it and kind of how things are put together. Another important part to note here before we move on to the actual probably first tasks that you're gonna get is that while you're going through that process, if you're doing the development environment setup stuff, you're gonna be following like a checklist. There'll be a guide of here's you know, step by step, do these things probably in some wiki or some other internal document that they've got, maybe a Google Doc nowadays. It just depends on the place, but you're gonna be following those steps. And one thing to watch out for is anything that's wrong. If there's something that's uh, missing or outdated or a step that's just not clearly defined, it's always good to just add some notes, take notes and then recommend them for improvement later on. If there's something that you see like, oh, there's, there was a step here, but I spent three hours trying to figure it out because one line was missing or that screenshot's old and doesn't make sense anymore. Um, make that an opportunity to improve things on your own as a, like a first thing that you're getting into. Like, hey, found a problem, Let, let's fix this. So let's go on though. What actual things are you gonna be doing beyond day one? What is uh, the second thing you're gonna do? Once the environment's set up, there are kind of four typical things I've seen people fall into from the beginning. First off, if you went in there in the interviews and you kind of sold yourself as being really good at something, maybe you're really good with um, data management or tool stuff or graphics programming stuff, maybe that's just like the thing that you love, you like writing shaders, then you may very well just get pushed right into doing some of that from the start. I've seen it happen quite a few times. In fact, it happened to me in my first uh, gameplay programming position. One of the things I did was a bunch of tool stuff because I already had a ton of tools experience. I knew how the data kind of worked and I was really good with databases and managing that stuff. So day one, I remember this, it was day one while I was doing the environment setup stuff in the middle of a stand-up meeting, I got the task of building a tool and data setup for 
managing the entire process of pushing data from our internal servers to our test servers and to our production servers. It's a crazy big task. It obviously took quite a while, but that was my first task because I had spent a lot of time on the database side of stuff. I, I kind of knew that, knew the tooling side, and I kind of sold myself as like, I could definitely do these kinds of things along with the other gameplay programming stuff. Some of the other things though that I've seen and done in other places, just like going in and fixing minor bugs. You go in there and there's sometimes there's the text is wrong on something. That's a really easy one because you get into the you get into the source code, you can just search for the bad text, go find it, figure out what's going on there and start to get a little bit more familiar with the code. You also run into scenarios where there are lots of little changes that designers want made that require a programmer or an engineer to do something, but there's really no time or energy to do that from the rest of the team. They're busy working on the core features and the designer wants some little things. So you're gonna find that you have a lot of opportunity to work alongside designers and artists, giving them a little bit of extra support and helping them do things that need a little bit of engineering experience because they're going to know the game really well. They're going to know the design, the maybe the pipeline for the art and everything else, but they're not really going to understand the code and engineering. And you'll be there as kind of a guide to help them figure out things, figure out maybe why something isn't working the way they expect it to, what flag is supposed to be on to get the behavior they want, and those kinds of things. It's another great way to really learn the code base and figure out how everything works. Now, before I go into the more controversial question, I wanted to mention that if you want to be successful with this, getting in on your first day or your first job as a junior or associate developer, I highly recommend that you work on the um, communicating part. In fact, there's some comments in the stuff about socializing and talking to other people. I think that that's probably the number one thing that will help you succeed there. When you get in there, you want to be talking to the other developers about how things work, why things work that way, and seeing if you can get as much time with them as possible, as long as you're not at that. You, you want to make sure that you're not like, interrupting and stopping them from doing work, but whenever they're available and just open and ready to help you kind of learn and get better with the project, definitely try pulling them in. Also, well, first, do a bit of research on your own, but don't sit there. I guess my point is, if you're working, you get lost, you get confused, do your own research for a little while, but don't sit there for days and days on end or hours and hours on end, just confused, not knowing what to do. Talk to people, figure stuff out, and the rest of the team will generally help you. They want you to grow and become an awesome senior engineer one day and be really productive there. So everybody's goal at the place when you're a junior engineer is really to help you level up. You might get one or two people that are just kind of snarky and, and mean or whatever, but for the most part, everybody is going to be helpful. And, and I think it's a great way, again, to get into the industry. All right, let's go on to question number two. And it said that uh, it was about this video where it talked about... AAA being slightly better than uh, indie for a lot of people, at least as an entryway into the job. It's not the only way, not available for everybody, but if it is available, I highly, highly recommend it because there are lots of benefits. But the comment was that AAA is all about the money these days anyway, and if anything, we need more indie devs. I, I don't disagree that we need more indie devs. I think we just need um, more of all of them. And it says, YouTubers are indie also. Why don't you go quit and work for a local news station or something? Um, it's largely because local news stations don't talk about game development and they mostly just talk about boring stuff. And, uh, I don't even know where there is a local news station actually. Uh, but if anybody knows of a game news station that wants to hire me and, and pay me a bunch of money to talk about game dev stuff, please let me know, send me an email and, uh, I'll definitely talk to them. Anyway, if you have questions or anything, just drop them in the comments and I'm going to try to answer as many as possible this week. And, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, don't forget to like and hit the subscribe, not the unsubscribe button. All right, see you later, bye.